Hello and welcome to part 5 of the large wildlife pond that I'm building at uh, Gosforth School. Today I'm going to be making the dipping platform and the hibernaculum. I've already got the bare bones of the, of the platform built, i.e. the front and the two sides. I'm going to cut a couple of supports now and then slowly build up the frame. This is the front of the platform. These are the two supports I'm putting in. So I'm looking down them, making sure that any bend goes up over. And then I'm going to screw them in with 100 mil screws. That's four inches if you're living in USA. This wood is all pressure treated pine. So it should last a hell of a long time outdoors and even with water lapping up it should still last at least 15-20 years. Um, it's very dry, therefore it's very hard. So before I put the screws in, I'm pre-drilling holes just to make it a little bit easier. That makes the job a heck of a lot easier if you pre-drill some holes before you put the screws in. With the back of this platform kind of following the curve of the pond, it's a little bit more difficult to build. But basically what I'm going to do is fix these angled pieces in here, pre-drilling them and screwing them, so there'll be an angled piece here and at the back there. In the middle section I'm going to put a straight with a little leg coming off and that'll all help to support the decking that's going on. Because of the shape of the base that I've got to work with, I'm uh, using 4x2s and 3x2s, a mixture of those, in order to make sure that this back edge stays level, I'm going to fasten a piece of 2x2 two two to the top, I'll pull everything up to the same level. That's it, everything's brought up to the same level, so I know that at least this back is level. The front end should be level as well because it's got a piece of 4x2 running right along it and it's a straight piece. Um, now all I've got to do is put the supports in. To support this, it's easiest to work from inside the pond, so I've got the waders on so that I don't get wet. Obviously in a warm country, it might be quite nice to take a dip, but in England, not so good. 
Um, I've chopped up various points around the outside so that this frame is more or less level. It's pretty much there. It's a little bit low here. So this is where I'm going to start. I'm going to drop a post in, mark it, cut it off, and then fix it with screws. Now if you remember from the previous videos, there's very large flat stones on the shelf under the water here to support these posts. That's pretty important that the posts actually rest on something really solid. You could put a concrete foundation in when the pond was dry. I prefer to use just big stones. You know it's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to contaminate the water and it gives a really solid base for the post. So all I do is sit that in pretty much level. Raise the front of the platform slightly so that the level tells me that the front's level and then mark it. And then I'll cut it off and fix it. That's that one in nice and solid. Now all I have to do is repeat the process for this one and also for the one that's going to be here. I don't like to have one in the middle on the front. I like to set that one back a bit so if the kids are arriving on they can actually get underneath this platform with their nets unhindered by posts along the front. That's the other two in pond supports sorted out, screwed in, really structurally sound. Um, now all remains is to put the supports in the back. We made a nice bed of cement there a few days ago when we were doing the previous step, building up the sides. So that gives us something really nice and hard to work from. That's the support sorted outside the pond, resting on the cement or resting on stones, making the whole structure very solid. I basically went round checking that everything was level, then getting little bits of 2x2, two 3x2, two, 4x2, two, two, basically whatever off cuts I had, putting them in, marking them, cutting them off and fixing them. Right, that's it for the frame. I did add a few smashed up bits of the sandstone underneath the supports, just as a bit of extra measure, belt and braces sort of approach. Basically the frame's not going to go anywhere, so now it's time to put the decking on. I'm going to allow about two inches or so either side of the frame, so that the decking hangs over the frame and you shouldn't be able to see all these supports and everything. As I mentioned before, I'm allowing approximately two inches, 50 mil, on either side, just to help hide the frame. I'm fixing these deck boards down with 70 mil screws. That's about right just short of three inches. This is double-sided decking. Got a really thick, deep groove on one side and lots of little thin grooves on the other side. I'm actually using this decking, thin grooves up over. The more kind of like a wavy effect as opposed to a cut. And I find this side allows you to brush the decking out a lot easier, especially if there's going to be dozens of kids with mucky shoes climbing around on top of here. It wants to be easy to clean. So allowing for a 50 mil overhang, ensuring that the decking is flat against the front, I'm going to fix them with the screws. I tend to keep the screws in a little bit, approximately an inch, inch and a quarter. That ensures that I don't get any splitting of the boards. I'm going to work my way along, finish this top board, put the next board on, and I'm going to allow approximately a 5mm gap between the boards, working my way back until I'm finished. One thing that probably bears mentioning is 
the shape of the screws. You'll see there that the little spiral bits don't go all the way up to the head. It's, in other words, it's a wasted screw. It's got a waste there. What this does, when you have two pieces of wood that you want to screw together, because you have this blank bit here, when you screw the screw in, it actually pulls the two bits of wood together, making them really solid, and that's pretty important. That does away with the need for clamps and all that malarkey, or pressing them down with your hand. You basically just put the two, woods, two bits of wood loosely together, screw them together, and they stay really tightly screwed together. That's about it for the deck. I've worked all the way back, shaped it at the back to kind of match the curve of the pond. And now I'm just going to put this front board on here just to finish the front of the deck off. That's it, just finishes the front off nicely so you can't see the supports. Before I build the hibernaculum, just off to my left here, I'm going to um, put a few plants in around the place and fill in all the planting pockets with soil ready for the main planting. Really, only three species going in today, as well as a few heathers for the top of the hibernaculum, but I'll cover that in a minute. So, I'll get on and do that. Planted a few plants around the sides. Heather, soft rush, pendulous sedge. The only one I'm putting in the pond today is the brook lime. This is so easy to plant because I took it from my pond. Bare root, no pot to knock off. Basically, all you do, is just plug the stems into a hole between the stones, plant a root and take away. That's it, simple as that. Now it'll create a lovely raft across the top of the water and be a really good habitat for invertebrates. The plants I'm putting around the edges here really need to be able to survive two extremes. They need to survive being very wet when the pond is really high and everything's waterlogged and they also need to survive being very dry in the summer when the pond's really low if it hasn't been topped up um, these planting pockets are going to get very very dry so heathers sedge grasses and rushes are excellent plants for that really all a hibernaculum is is just a secure habitat for amphibians and insects and so on um, with loads of cavities loads of little hidey holes organic matter and ideally some sort of vegetation on the top. First thing I'm going to put down is a bit of soil. Spread that out. And then a pallet. Next thing that's going to go on top of here is a roof of sorts to the cave, which will be just odd offcuts of liner or underlay. I'm also going to put a bit more soil in here as well. 
I'm going to chuck a little bit of rubble in there. Smashed up bits of spare stone. Then I'm going to put the soil in. Basically anything just to create a myriad of little caves and holes inside the inside the hibernaculum. Decided to use underlay, the soil sticks to it quite well. All I'm going to do, burn a few holes in to allow the soil that I place on the top to go through and create entrance holes for anything to come from this level up to the next level that I'm going to build. done, I can add some soil. See how it's dropping through the holes, filling up the bottom level? I've allowed about two inches here as an entrance. Now all I'm going to do is drop another pallet on top. This one's actually got a little bit more of a solid top, so it's probably more suited to being on the top level. Chuck that in there. Creatures will be able to climb into the hibernaculum, mess around in the bottom, come up into this next level if they want to. So basically I'm going to do the same with this level as I did with the last one. I'm going to chuck a bit of rubble, smashed up stone in here, and then I'm going to cover the whole lot with soil. Looking in there I can see that the holes haven't been covered up so anything wanting to get from the bottom layer to the top layer can do so quite easily. By building a hibernaculum this way with lots of smashed up stones and so on it's suitable not only for toads and frogs and newts and so on, but also for a lot of invertebrates like wood lice, uh, basically anything that creeps or crawls, beetles and so on, worms, they'll all end up in here and they'll all be food for the amphibians. Now all I'm going to do Put a few stones around the outside and cover the whole lot with soil.
now that I've got a quantity of soil on top and also around the edges I'm going to add some of the heathers that I've got around the edges and then build more soil up behind them That's the basics of how to build a high vernaculum. Basically you just want loads of habitat within a soil mound. Of course you can make it with logs, bricks, paving slabs, anything really. But I find making it this way, it, there's a lot of dry areas in there so it tends not to attract slugs, which would probably be a good idea if you're making one in your garden. In the next video I'm going to be planting this up and adding a few more stones around it just to help retain the soil because if we get a, a lot of rain this soil has a habit of just disappearing so I'll basically be creating this as a rockery and planting it up in part 6